Hey everyone, Tim here from Snap Attack. Let's dig into this week's Threat Snapshot. So we're going to be focusing on RMMs, or Remote Monitoring and Management Tools. These are legitimate applications commonly used inside of organizations for technical support. Think about your IT help desk when you're having a computer issue and they need to remotely access your machine to be able to do things like see what's on your desktop be able to, you know, interact with that, launch programs, you know, maybe apply a patch or install software. You know, these tools, again, have legitimate purposes, but they also are double-edged sword because attackers can utilize these from command and control. And that's something that a lot of adversaries commonly use. Again, these tools are legitimate. They're signed binaries. Your EDR, your antivirus, isn't going to alert on those innately just because, again, they can be maliciously used could also think about these from an insider threat perspective. Um, what happens if somebody wants to, you know, steal information outside of working hours and they can log into a server and use one of these tools to pull information off of it. So lots of, you know, potential areas where these can be abused. Um, we're going to look at a couple of specific examples today. One of them uh, is a threat intelligence report put out by CISA, and this was one of the you know, bulletins, it's a joint alert between, you know, CISA, CSA, FBI, and really, you know, this is targeting um, Scattered Spider, but there are lots of other adversary groups and threat actors that use RMMs. Uh, Scattered Spider is one that, again, you should be familiar with the name. Um, they're very prevalent in terms of, you know, financial theft uh, through ransomware, um, doing data theft and extortion. Um, they are, you know, very much a financially motivated actor, not not state sponsored, and you know you can see some of their TTPs um, been in the news a lot recently for again some of their initial access vectors with you know um, SMS phishing, vishing, um, MFA spam, and being able to connect in. Um, but one of the common things that they do after gaining access is using RMMs. Um, some of the legitimate tools again that this actor have used are you know, fleet deck level. Um, they use tunneling software like Ingrock or um, Tailscale. You know, there's Pulseway, Screen Connect, Splashtop, TeamViewer, you know, lots of opportunities here. And again, because these are all legitimate tools, if something is not working as well, they're getting detected, they can pivot over to another one very easily. And again, these, these things might even be in your network already. And, you know, it, it's, it's very easy to, to blend in. You know, if we think about, you know, living off the land and, you know, blending in because these tools have legitimate uses, you know, this is, you know, an extension of that. It's that bring your own land. So, you know, once I land on a machine, I can pick one of these tools, I can install it, and I can continue operating, um, oftentimes undetected. I think this also is a good opportunity to talk about AnyDesk. So I know this is, you know, rapidly in the news since last week, um, AnyDesk you know, responsibly disclosed that they had been compromised. Um, actors had been involved in their, uh, you know, their infrastructure. They were able to dump, you know, username, password, you know, hashes, security tokens. So they ordered that everybody reset those. Um, they also took some additional precautions to revoke their signing certificates, start using new one for their binaries. Um, overall, I think they've been pretty responsible with how they have handled this. Um, I think there's a lot of FUD around this one, particularly with, um, you know, people suggesting that this is going to be the next Solar Winds, where, um, you know, any desk versions could be backdoored, especially because they revoked their signing certificate. I haven't seen any evidence of that at this point. Again, that's something that, you know, we and the industry will continually monitor. But I think, again, just the, the promptness of their, you know, responses here, the, you know, actions that they've taken and all of that are all good things. Um, but that said, when these sort of things are in the news, it becomes very much a question of, hey, you know, are we using any desk? Do we have any versions that are affected? You know, what do we need to do here? So I uh, thought this was, could be a good opportunity to talk a little bit more broadly about RMs, RMMs in general. And we can also do a little bit here with any desk too. So as we talk through detections and things, one other you know thing I want to mention here, um, this is a good repository um, from Living in Sin, Love the Pond, uh, and this is a list of RMM tools, and it gives you some again IOCs or some other you know things about them that you can use. So if I were looking at any desk specifically, you know I can see the executable name, who the signer is or was in this case because they just changed their subject certificate. Domain names it connects to ports. 
Um, this is again a very good list with a lot of these here. You can you can see multiple you know ones. So this is a good opportunity just as a reference material for you know looking at some of these RMMs, and that's something we again will link to. Um, in Snap Attack, we have again these new collections for threat snapshots, where again ahead of the video being recorded, we'll summarize all that information, and then afterwards I'll throw this video in here too for our, our customers and uh, community members. So. This is covering, again, the RMM tools that we have. Um, Scattered Spider has used a lot, like we saw before. And we've you know, aggregated, again, some of these indicators here for all of these different tools. So you can see you know, this is a, a very broad swath. Um, I will say not all of these are necessarily used by Scattered Spider. We have included other RMMs in here. But again, just given the ubiquity of them, given how easy it is to you know, change out that TTP in a campaign, wouldn't be surprised if Scattered Spider or another threat actor started using these, you know, if they hadn't already. So we have Fleet Deck, Level, Pulseway, Screen Connect, Splash Top, Tactical RMM, Team Viewer, get a couple of those network tunneling tools like Ingrock and Tail Scale, have, you know, other ones that, again, Scattered Spider hasn't used but could use. So AnyDesk, Amy Admin, Alerta, Go-To Assistant, Log Me In, Inable, uh, Ninja One or Ninja RMM, Zoho Assist. Um, you can tell easily here that there's a lot of these. And again, we have specific, you know, pages for these in Snap Attack, where if you wanted to, you know, deep dive any desk, you could. If you wanted to see other RMM software, remote access software, you could. Um, lots of content here. We're just going to kind of go through and touch on a couple of these at a high level. So what do we, these look like in terms of threats and what we have captured here? So. There's a lot of great community community resources out there. Um, Atomic Red Team did a kind of a, an effort or a sprint, uh, if you will, on um, RMM tools. So they've got Atomic Attack scripts for things like AnyDesk um, and lots of others. Uh, really what this is going to do is just download and install the file, and then we can see what we have. So um, we'll actually just kind of run the Atomic. Not really a whole lot interesting in terms of the attacker perspective. Again, these are very versatile tools used for command and control. So you would see all of those things coming in after the fact of, hey, I'm using this for you know exfiltrating data or you know installing a backdoor or doing other sort of things post exploitation. But really, we're just looking at again establishing this as a command and control mechanism or you know a means of uh, connecting to these servers. So. AnyDesk is installed. We see that we have, you know, detection hits here. We'll talk about those in a minute. Um, beauty of these, again, with Snap Attack, we have the attack scripts. You could also run these as atomic. So, you know, when you do have, um, you know, a hunting strategy or you want to create some detections, you can run these attack scripts in your network just so that you have, you know, test data and you can see if those defenses are, you know, um, going to be are going to cover what you need. Um, other ones, so we did a, our own sort of research effort around here around that time when the Scattered Spider, you know, advisory came out. So uh, lots of other ones that we wanted to add to supplement the community. Fleet Deck is one example where we didn't see that coverage here. So we wrote our own attack script. Um, you can see what that would look like here. So we've got the threat. We've got, again, attack script where we can run, install Fleet Deck, and then we can check and see, do we have, you know, evidence of this in our network? All right. So... It's a little bit more about the background, what these things look like. Let's talk about detection and hunting strategies. And the way I would approach this to start is always going to be threat hunting. Again, these are legitimate software tools. They have a reason and purpose for being inside of your organization. A lot of it comes down to context. Who is using the tool? Is this um, an outside contractor and they're the, the help desk or an internal, you know, contra or internal staff or help desk? Or is this somebody from HR or accounting who maybe installed or opened up, you know, a phishing email and installed this and, you know, now they're, they're victim and that's going to be used for, you know, pivoting and, and other things. So hunting is a good strategy, you know, figuring out that software inventory, which RMMs do we use internally, which ones do we not? Um, that might be based on your, you know, IT acceptable use policy and approved software. You know, maybe these are, you know, completely forbidden except for one or two that are used by administrators. You know, hunting and checking to make sure that only the administrators are using these tools and they're only using the approved tools. Again, it, it's a, an audit requirement, but it's also a good threat hunting strategy. And then after you have a better understanding of the, your network, you can tune these hunting, these rules and create detections for those. So if one of these approved or unapproved RMMs, 
you know, pops up in your network, you could fire an alert off on that, and that could be malicious activity. Could also prevent things like insider threat. Um, again, lots of versatility with these. So without further ado, let's talk about what some of these, you know, look like. So RMM tool installation, um, you know, this is going to look specifically at, um, you know, files that are created, you know, with some of these, you know, file name, you know, agents or folders. So we can see things like screen connect, log me in, level, um, looking to see, you know, what that file or that binary is, is a good opportunity. Um, again, you know, could potentially fragile based on, you know, what if they rename that in process, which is why we have detection depth and multiple hunting strategies. Um, a lot of these tools are going to install a service. Um, that's because they want some sort of persistence level, not necessarily persistence as an attacker, but just so that, hey, next time I need to administer the system, it's already installed and set up and I can connect to it. So, you know, we can see, you know, based on common service names, looking at, you know, Windows event log, like a 4697, um, we can take a look and see, you know, yep, okay, Screen Connect was installed here. Uh, Team Viewer was installed here as the service level RMM. Um, you get the idea here. So this can be another valuable tool in your arsenal. Um, maybe you want to look at, you know, process creations and executions. So again, you can take a look at those. Um, you can look at it by the binary name. You can look at it by some other attributes if you have those data sources. So again, like we said, it's very easy for an attacker to modify, you know, the file name. Um, it's harder if that, you know, binary has additional attributes like the company or the description or the product name. Um, you can see some of these here where, um, again, if I rename any desk, that's fine, you know, unless they're going to recompile this or edit that metadata, those things aren't going to be there. So good opportunity to see, you know, some, you know, some detection opportunities. You can even see this was a, a kill chain that we demoed here with Conti Ransomware, uh, again, using any desk as a tool. Uh, one other one, again, network traffic. So different ways that you can do this, obviously looking for the domains and things that it connects to. Um, this one is looking at the certificates. So I want to see if this is connecting to, um, you know, here's like an AnyDesk client certificate. You can see this is connecting to log me in. Um, that's another good opportunity to see because again, these tools are going to generally advertise again trying to make themselves legitimate they're going to have those certificates so this could be another way that you could detect this at the network level so again depending on what tools telemetry you have available in your network there's lots of different hunting strategies and then these can be fine-tuned again with your own you know false positive reduction logic based on okay you know these are the exceptions for my administrators or we use these tools but not these so they are going to take a little bit of tuning but it's definitely worth having these um, two other ones that we'll just kind of touch on here. Um, so I know AnyDesk with everything in the news. These are a couple interesting ones from the Sigma community. Um, again, there's different ways that these tools can be launched and used. And, um, you know, this one here is looking for um, AnyDesk coming from a suspicious folder. So like I talked about the bring your own lad, uh, bring your own land strategy. Um, you know, I can take that, you know, executable, I can plop it in, you know, in this case, the user's desktop, um, or it could be a, a temp directory or some other folder. So there is opportunities here where, um, again, I want to see where this is being launched from. So if it's being launched, not from program files or app data or one of the other normal installation places, that might be an attacker that just brought this here for part of the campaign and, you know, didn't want to make too much noise by installing it. So they just, you know, brought this and launched it standalone. So that is a detection opportunity and a strategy, and that could be a really good detection. Um, again, if you're using or not using that tool, or if you are using that tool in your network, but you want to limit, again, potentially bad ways of, you know, it being abused. Um, another one interesting here is, um, again, piping the password via CLI with the set password flag. Um, not necessarily something that you're going to see a lot when you're actually using this legitimately. Again, you have a, a UI where you can put that information in, but if you are trying to do things remotely, you know, as an attacker, you know, I've got my C2 and I'm using this to, you know, add an additional layer for lateral movement inside. Um, I'm probably going to be doing a lot of these operations by command line. So, you know, seeing that set password piece, um, you know, being put here could be another good alert. Uh, capability. So those are a couple of things that can help keep you protected. Um, again, RMMs are constantly evolving. Um, SnapAttack can help you stay ahead of these and keep on top. 
This is a weekly series for our threat snapshots, so be sure to follow along, like, subscribe, comment, and we'll see you next time.